Okay, so um, these instructions are going to show you how to uh, set up your page. Now we all know that we have model space and we have paper space. And so what we've already got a, uh, well in this example we've already got a plot plan created for you, but I'm going to show you how to create one from scratch. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go new layout here. And uh, when you click on that new layout, I have mine configured that uh, whenever I create a new layout, it asks me if I want to do any page setup information when I create a new layout. So you can turn that off or on by selecting this checkbox here. So that just means whenever you create a new layout, the first time you click on it, it's going to ask you if you want to, uh, to do the page setup right away. I kind of like that because then it forces me to uh, think about how I'm going to set up my page right away. And it saves me a step of having to right click on the layout. But let's just imagine that you, uh, you have this turned off. And here you have now a layout, which is clearly not what you want. You want something a little different. You want to use different page size. Um, you want to, uh, first the thing I would do is probably rename it, so change the name. So let's call this plot plan. I'm just going to put a little two after the end. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. We've already got a plot plan here. Otherwise, you know, I need to call it something different. So if you didn't have that feature turned on, you would have to right click and then go to page setup manager. Okay, and you get that same window. Now what you're going to do is as long as you're selecting or as long as you uh, click from the proper layout. So if I wanted to edit this page setup and I'm clicked on this one, I can still do it. Well, actually, no, sorry, I can't. Uh, you have to actually select the, the uh, layout first and then go to Page Setup Manager. And you should have the proper page setup selected already. But if you don't, you want to select the page setup for the paper or for the uh, layout that you want to change. And then you're going to click on Modify. So it's going to pop up this screen here. Now the first thing that I do, and this is my preference, is I always select Drawing to PDF as my plotter. Now the reason I do that is I have several different plotters that I can choose from here, but the Drawing to PDF comes with every installation of AutoCAD, which means that you can go to any computer anywhere in the world if it has AutoCAD on it, and it'll have Drawing to PDF unless the user has actually deleted it. Okay, but it'll have that paper or that plot set up. So if you have a drawing and you put it on USB key and you want to be able to put it and print it from another computer, this will be there. Now what it does is it prints the PDF first, which I also like because the benefit of that is that um, I'm not wasting paper. I can actually check my plot before I print it to paper to make sure the line weights are correct, to make sure the layers are correct, make sure all the information is there and to make sure it's going to print properly. Um, before this, uh, what would often happen is you make a print, you go pull it off the printer, which sometimes isn't next to you, so you have to travel a fair ways to do that. You realize that you made a mistake. You go back, you fix your mistake, you print again. Another piece of paper is wasted. You realize you made a mistake. You go back and print again. There's been um, many times where I've wasted, I've probably killed an entire tree. Okay, now PDF allows you to check that before you print to make sure that, you know, you can save a little bit of time and make sure you save a little bit of paper. So this is the uh, the printer that we're the plotter that I would like you to select. Um, <clears throat> now the next thing we need to do is we need to select the paper size. Now paper sizes are based off of the printers. So if I change the printer to another printer, you'll notice that the paper size will ask if I want to change that. Okay, it'll actually change the paper size. So once you select the paper or the sorry the plotter, you then need to select your paper size. Now there's a whole bunch of metric paper sizes that come default with this particular plotter. But if you don't have the paper size that you need, you need to create it. And it's really easy to do. So I'll show you how to do that now. So we want to print this on 8.5 by 14. I already have that paper size configured, but I'll show you how I got to doing that. So you're going to click on Properties next to that printer. Now make sure there's, there's different ones that look like this. Okay, DWF6 to ePlot, that's not the same thing as DWG to PDF. Okay, Publish to PNG, these are not the same plotters. Adobe PDF or any of you have PDF Creator, those are not the same plotters. Those are not installed on every version of AutoCAD. PDF Creator is a SATE thing. So it will be on SATE laptops, but it will not be on a laptop when you go to a workplace. It will not be there unless they too have selected to download and install that. So drawing to PDF, you have to make sure that's selected. Then you're going to click on Properties and you're going to get this Plotter Configuration Editor. There's three tabs across the top. Make sure you're on the Device and Document Settings tab and go down to custom paper sizes. Now you'll see I've got a few custom paper sizes already configured. There's the 8.5 by 14. I'm just going to delete it. We'll create a new one from scratch. It's really easy to do. Okay, so let's imagine you don't have any paper sizes and you need to create one. Well, you just click on Add. And after you click on Add, you're going to start from scratch. I find that's the easiest way. You could do start from existing if you, you know, one's really close, but you need to make a few minor changes. <clears throat> you can use an existing, but start from scratch is the easiest one I've found. Click on Next, 
And now here's my paper. So my width is going to be 8.5. My height is going to be 14. 8.5 by 14 inches. If you prefer metric, you can change that to millimeters. But I prefer uh, imperial. I know that 8.5 by 14 is the paper size that I want. I'm going to click on Next. And now these are the margins. These are the printable margins. Now this is important because if we select zero for all of these, that means that the printable margins of my paper are going to be the exact outside boundaries of my paper. Now I don't know if every printer is capable of that. I know some printers are. They're capable of what's called full bleed, which means that you can actually print to the very extents of the paper, even off the paper sometimes. Okay? But not all printers are capable of that. So we need to pick a margin that's fairly safe for most, if not all, printers. Uh, most printers that have been manufactured in the past, say, 10 years, are capable of quarter inch margins. Quarter inches, um, about 12 and a half millimeters. Sorry, is that right? No, a little less than that, sorry. Um, an inch is 25, so a quarter of that would be about eight, eight or nine millimeters, okay? Um, so I'm just going to keep, because I've selected inches, I'm going to keep quarter inch margins. So quarter inches on all four sides. That's going to give me a safe margin. Now the PDF is capable of printing to the outside margins, but you won't be able to do that when you print to your actual printer. Because the printer, say the printer that we have in this room, is not necessarily capable of full bleed. Okay? So quarter inch is what I always go with. And now it gives us an automatic name that includes the size. I highly recommend don't take out the size. You need to be able to see that later. But you can change the user one if you want to. You can say, let's, make, let's call this custom. Or we can call it Fred or Nancy. It doesn't really matter. It's just as long as it's a name that you recognize, or you can leave it at user one. That's fine too. Okay, but I usually like to change it so that I know that I created it. Click next, click finish. Now, some of you are going to get a message that says, Would you like to make changes to the default plotter configuration file? Make sure you say yes there. Once you collect, uh, create a custom paper size for this particular plotter, you won't have to create that again. So, this is not something you'll have to do every time if you have that paper size already. Yeah, here's the, the uh, notification you're going to get. You make sure you say yes to that. Um, if you have that paper size, then it will be in this list and it'll always be there in this installation of AutoCAD. So, I go right up to the very top and there's my new paper size right at the very top. So, I select that from the list and that's the paper size that AutoCAD is going to use for this to print the PDF. Now, we want to make sure that we select, there's a few more options we have to. Uh, to select here, one of them is going to be what to plot. So we have a few different options. We can plot what's on the display at the time. We can plot the extents. We can plot the layout or we can plot a window. Now many of you are going to say, oh, window, I recognize that one. I'm going to use that one. Well, you don't need to. This is a layout. This is a paper space layout. It's designed to print to paper automatically. Okay. If we do the window, it's going to ask us what window. Right? Oh, and then now we just need to select the window that we want to plot. Okay? Now there's a problem with that. And that is if you move something in your drawing, if you move, if you make a change to that, you have to reselect that layout. It takes time to do that all the time. And if you have multiple layouts across the bottom, you can't print them all at once. So what I recommend, and that's what the really AutoCAD paper space is designed for, is that your plot area is the layout itself. So whatever is on the layout will print. Now, we don't need to worry about plot offsets. I usually leave that at zero. Um, the next thing we need to uh, configure is our plot scale. Okay, so this really should be one-to-one. -one. And uh, depending on the drawing units that we're working with, um, it's going to be one unit, one real unit, real-life unit, compared to one um, drawing unit. Or So, for example, one millimeter on my printed drawing, now I'm printing in meters, or I'm, I'm at my drawings actually designed the model spaces in meters, so this is 0 0.001, right? Because one millimeter is equal to 0 0.001 meters. Now the units is whatever units you're using in your model space. If you're using uh, millimeters in model space, then this is going to be one to one, because one millimeter is equal to one millimeter in your model space. But we're not. We're using meters, right? We went to format units, and we selected meters. So this is 0 0.001. Okay, that's important. If you don't do that then your drawing is going to be way out of whack. You go, you'll get to your uh, paper space and it'll be just be crazy. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the plot style table. Now I've given you guys the uh, site plan plot style table. Um, I'll show you how to import that in a bit, but uh, you essentially want to select the, whatever plot style table you're going to use. These are the pen assignments. Really what this does, I'll show you a little preview here. What this does is based on the color, you can set certain um, automatic either line weights 
line types or colors, or uh, obviously a few bunch of other um, options, for that particular color. So if you have a layer that uses cyan, or color 4, you can specify the line weight that's printed, you can specify the line type, and this could be totally different from what you have in model space. So model space might be a solid line, and all the lines are the exact same width, the exact same dimension, but they're all different colors. You can say, no, I want it to be black, so it doesn't matter you know, what printer I use, it's always going to be black, and I want the line weight to be a defined line weight. Now, I've given these to you, so we don't need to worry about these too much, but um, you can you modify these ahead of time, and then you save it as a um, CTV file. All right, so uh, the other option that I usually like to do is display plot styles. This just makes it so that instead of viewing a color layout, you actually view a black and white or a monochrome layout if that's what your site plan is set up to be. If your site plan is set up with color, you'll see what the actual colors are going to be. Now, I've got my site plan.ctv set up with black and white because that's how it's going to print on a piece of paper anyway, so I might as well make it look like the piece of paper is going to look. And the last thing you want to do is the uh, drawing orientation. I wouldn't worry too much about the plot options. You can play with those if you need to, but just leave it as default for now. Uh, but set the portrait. We want a portrait format. So after I press OK and close, I should get an example of what my drawing looks like. Now, of course, I have nothing on here right now because I haven't created a viewport. Or if I have, the viewport has sized itself completely different. Okay, So that was my former viewport with the old paper space the old layout, but now I've got a new layout, a new size, new um, uh, printable margins. So I'm going to delete that viewport and I'm going to recreate a new one. Okay, Brand new one right from scratch. It's really easy. So the next stage we're going to do is we're going to create the viewport. So really easy way to do this is type in viewports at the bottom. Uh, there is also a, uh, a viewports button somewhere. I don't know where it is. I'm just used to uh, typing it in. And then we come up with this, this one right here. And if I could choose Active Model Configuration, that's what I want, Active Model Configuration. The next option I give is Specify the First Corner or gives me the option to fit. So if I wanted to specify a viewport in here, a certain size, I could do that. But I want my viewport to take up the entire printable area of the page. My view, I only have one viewport for this particular layout. You can have more than one. You can have a million if you wanted to. You can have a hundred. You can have three. You can have five. All different configurations of viewports, all looking at different parts of the drawing at different scales. But I only need one viewport for this particular drawing, so I'm going to choose Fit. Now I can press Enter, or I can click on the Fit button, and you'll see that I now had a viewport that was created, which went right over top of the printable area. Now let me show you, the printable area is still there. I'm going to move this off. You see the dotted lines represent the printable area. That means that's what we set up. That was the quarter inch margins we set up in the paper size when we configured that plotter. Okay, I'm going to move my viewport just a little bit out. The printable area is very important. Nothing will print outside of that printable area. So for example, if I move part of my drawing, and part of my drawing is outside of that printable area, it's going to get cut off right at the line of the dotted lines there. That's really important. It will get cut off. A lot of students or a lot of people don't realize that because if they can see it on their layout, they think it should print. But that's not always the case. You have to look at the printable area, the dotted lines that are placed there. Now, if you don't have those dotted lines, let me show you how to get those. So we're going to go to Tools. We're going to go to Options. This is how you get those dotted lines to show up. If your paper space doesn't look like mine right now, I'll show you how to do that. It's under Display Colors. First of all, the colors. Some of you may have a black background. Let me show you how to get that back to white. So if you're in the Layout Mode, you go to Sheet Layout, Uniform Background, you can change that from white to black. Now, some other instructors will want you to use black backgrounds. That's fine. This is where you go to change it. Okay, you can change that to black. Apply and close. Apply. Okay, and now I have a black background. Okay? Let me go back and change that again. So, Tools, Options, Display, Colors, Sheet Layout, I'm going to change that to white. Okay, fine, close. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this layout elements here. I'm going to make sure that every single one of these checkboxes is turned on. This means that it's going to show me my layout and model tabs. We really want that because we want to be able to see the layout separate from the model tabs. It's going to show the printable area. If I take that off, then I'm not going to see that dotted line, which is my printable area. So I want to make sure that's turned on. I like to see a paper background. I like, I like to look at my layout and imagine that it's a piece of paper, and this is what my printed drawing is going to look like. Okay, paper shadow is just a 
you know, it, it's not necessary, but it just makes it look like a piece of paper is coming off the page a little bit. So it looks a little bit more like a piece of paper. And here's where you can uh, toggle that show page setup manager for new layouts. And this will automatically create a new viewport in those new layouts. So these are the options. I have them all selected. I click on apply, I press OK, and now I should have the dotted lines. I should have a paper shadow. There's that black shadow for the paper shadow. And I should have a white background. Okay, so now it looks like a piece of paper. That's what I want. Now obviously, this is not what I want to print. I want to actually zoom in on the area that I want to print. So I'm going to activate the viewport. I do that by double clicking into it. If I want to deactivate the viewport, I double click outside. Double click inside. I zoom into the part of my drawing that I want. I don't have to get it exact, just in, in the general vicinity. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the, the scale for that particular viewport. Now we want this to be 1 to 200. So I have 1 to 200 in my set here. And when I do that, you'll see it kind of zooms up into, into scale and all I need to do is pan it around. Some of you may not have that 1 to 200, so let me show you how to create it. So if you don't have that 1 to 200, you're going to go all the way down to the bottom where you see custom. Click on custom. All right, so one paper space unit is 200 drawing units. So the, the window that pops up, which I can't seem to get to work this morning, um, it will ask you what do you want to call it so I'm going to call it 1 to 200 just like that 1 colon 200 and 1 paper space unit is equal to 1 drawing unit or 1 paper unit is equal to two, sorry 200 drawing units okay so that's the uh, the scale that we want now if I deactivate the viewport I have to do that in order to zoom in otherwise it's going to change my scale off of 1 to 200 I want to check that um, all of the border for my title block is inside of that printable area, not outside, or it'll get cut off. So I'm going to check all four corners, and you'll notice here that it's going to it's cut off a little bit. So I'm going to activate the viewport. I'm going to pan it up so that it's not, and then deactivate the viewport again to zoom out. And I'm just going to check all four corners to make sure that everything's going to fit in the printable area on that page, and everything will fit to scale. That's important. It has to be to scale. If you, um, if you don't do that, if you don't have it to scale or you have it slightly off, then you aren't truly printing to scale and that's, that's an issue. Okay, and that's it. You're, uh, you're, you're ready to go. You're ready to plot. So that's the end of um, configuring your paper space. You've uh, configured now a uh, page setup. So you've got a page setup. You have a plotter, paper size. You're telling it what to print. You've got a scale. You've got a, a series of plot style tables and also your drawing orientation. And so that should be everything that you need in order to get that to print. And now I'll, the next video I'll show you how to, um, how to actually print that to PDF and to DWFX.